In this video, we're going to look at how we can tell when a plant has a disease. And we'll also cover the defenses that plants have to stop them from getting diseases in the first place. Just like humans, plants can catch diseases from a range of microorganisms, including fungi, bacteria, and viruses, but also from larger organisms like insects. They can also get deficiency diseases, which can happen if they don't get enough essential minerals, like nitrates or magnesium ions. For example, nitrates are needed for making proteins, and therefore for growth. So plants without sufficient nitrates often get stunted growth, where they don't grow as much as they should. Magnesium ions, on the other hand, are needed for making chlorophyll, which in turn is needed for photosynthesis. So plants with a magnesium deficiency often suffer chlorosis from lack of chlorophyll and have yellow leaves. Some other symptoms that diseased plants might have include abnormal growths or lumps, malformed stems or leaves, patches of decay, or spots of discoloration on their leaves. In some cases, you might even be able to see the organism responsible, particularly if they're fairly big, like aphids or spider mites. When trying to diagnose disease, the easiest thing to do is to take basic observations and try to match the symptoms that you see to a disease listed in a garden manual or a website. If that fails though, then you could send a sample of the diseased plant to a plant pathologist, which is somebody who specializes in plant disease and will be able to do more detailed testing. For example, they could take a tissue sample and then look at it under a microscope so that they can see the problems in more detail. They could also look for unique antigens that come from particular pathogens, perhaps using monoclonal antibodies. Or even better, they could run DNA tests that look for pathogen DNA. A more basic method is trial and error. For example, if your plant has some yellow leaves, so you think it has a magnesium deficiency, then you could just give it some magnesium and see if that fixes it. Or if you think it's a fungal disease, then you could spray it with antifungal chemicals and see what happens. The benefit of this technique is that you can just try one thing, and if it doesn't work, you try something else. The last thing we need to cover are plant defenses, which can be split between physical, chemical, and mechanical. Physical defenses act to physically prevent the entry of pathogens, and include a waxy cuticle, which often covers the leaves and stems of plants, the cellulose cell walls around each individual cell, and the layers of dead cells that some plants have around their stem like bark. Meanwhile, chemical defenses refers to actual chemicals that the plants can secrete. These could be antimicrobial substances, which kill bacteria or fungi, or poisons that deter or kill insects. Plants actually make so many different chemicals that a huge number of our drugs are derived from plant chemicals, including the common painkiller aspirin which comes from the bark and leaves of willow trees. And lastly, mechanical defenses are similar to physical ones, but have more of a function rather than just acting as a physical barrier. They include things like thorns and hairs that stop animals from eating or touching them, or leaves that curl or droop if insects land on them. Anyway, that's everything for this video. So if you enjoyed it, then please do give us a like and subscribe. And we'll see you again soon.